Land Rover fans all around the world have waited three years for a brand new Defender. And finally, it's here. As giants of the car world go, the Land Rover Defender is right up there. But replacing a car that was in production for nearly 70 years is no mean feat. That's why this one has been a long time in the making. And the new one is now not only more refined, more spacious, easy to live with, and will appeal to more buyers than ever before, it's also true to its ancestor. It should be unstoppable off-road. Coming up in this in-depth preview, we find out how modern it really is. Take a look at the outside. Look at it. It just looks such like the old car, doesn't it? And the inside. Do you hear that? That's a noise the original Defender never made. And reveal everything you need to know. Before we get started though, subscribe to the channel and tell us what you think in the comments below. Right, let's start off with styling. It is a Defender after all, isn't it? Now, the irony is the original Land Rover was never designed at all. It was designed for, to be fit for purpose. But this one has had to be because, I mean, it is the rebirth of the Defender after all, isn't it? Now, at the front, I mean, it looks pretty special, doesn't it? You're not going to mistake this for any other SUV on the road, are you? Now, I think it looks a bit like a concept car but there are still some key Defender design cues going on here. Now, I love the geometric forms going on here. Lots of squares, it all looks very modernist, very clean cut, doesn't it? Now, down the side, this is where the Defender really does pick up some of its heritage because you've got these square wheel arches, this steeply raked windscreen, and look at the little kink up there. That is straight from the Defender style book, isn't it? And look, the return of the Alpine light. That is such a distinctive, classic Defender styling cue. But it's at the back, though, where the car looks most Defender-y, doesn't it? And one of the reasons for that is this design here, where it looks as though it's been sawn off. Now, that's not just purely for design purposes. It's ideally because this car can have the greatest possible departure angles, which of course is what you need when you go off road. Now, of course, it's got the exterior mounted wheel and it's got the side opening tailgate. It is typically Land Rover heavy, which is all good. Now, this is the 90. You can see it is the three door version. There is the 110, which has got the five doors. And if you do need a bigger boot and the potential to carry two people in the back to make it a seven seater or five plus two, as Land Rover likes to call it, the 110 is the car for you. But the 90 looks the most iconic, doesn't it? Now inside and uh, do you hear that? That's a noise the original Defender never made. That just speaks of solidity and strength, doesn't it? And that is a, a key word to describe the entire interior, actually, because it really is built to last, is this car. Now, there's lots of stuff to talk to you about in here. The first thing I want to kick off with is this beam that runs around here. Now, it's made from die-cast magnesium alloy, and it is structural. It is part of the car. To prove that, if I just grab the grab handle here and shake the car, the whole car is moving. I mean, you don't normally get that in a Range Rover, do you, for heaven's sake? Now, uh, talking about this car being fit for purpose, the as standard, you get rubber mats throughout the entire car with um, carpets on top. You get flush fitting door sills as well, so you can wash the interior of this car to get rid of all the dirt and the muck and everything. Again, fit for purpose. Another thing that's fit for purpose, look, the exposed screw heads there. Why cover them up? It's a Defender for heaven's sake, isn't it? Now there's a clear reference to this car's heritage here because you know I said the 90 is a five seater. Well, you can actually make it a six seater if you go for the optional jump seat here because in its sort of raised, well, the, in its lowered position, you've got a couple of cup holders. You've got lots of USB ports there as well, but you can actually raise it up and then you've got space for a child to sit there. And it just harks back to those classic days of motoring with mum and dad up front and the kid in the middle. Now, to make way for the child's legs, they've had to move the gear lever to the top here. And again, if you look around this interior, you'll find very few switch gear carried over to, from other Land Rover products. It is all beautifully, beautifully designed in here. Now, you can go for a multitude of different options in here, different interior trims, different colours. We've got sort of a textile and leather combo here here. You can go for full leather, full textile, full material, all sorts of different options. One of which is this fabric roof. It folds back. You can have a normal roof if you like, but that again is perfect for your sort of safari trips away, isn't it? 
There's nothing retro about the tech on board the Defender, as it debuts a brand new infotainment system for Jaguar Land Rover. It's called PV Pro, and JLR says it's quicker and easier to use than its other, older systems, and is housed in a 10-inch glossy touchscreen. There's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard, and is also home to the Defender's vast array of off-road programs, but more of that later. There's also a new version of Land Rover's Activity Key. There's a smartphone app to control your Defender, and you can specify a head-up display. And the Defender gets two of JLR's newest pieces of tech from the Range Rover Evoque. Clear sight ground view, so you can see the terrain directly beneath you, and a rear view mirror that can become a screen, giving you better visibility. And the Defender should never have to visit a dealer to receive upgrades, as there's over-the-air updates. Just like its predecessor, you'll be able to get many versions of the Defender, even including a couple of commercial variants. At launch, there are five versions of the civilian car. The standard one gets lovely 18-inch steel wheels, a heated windscreen, LED lights, PUD lights, 8-way adjustable heated front seats, the 10-inch screen with Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and clear side ground view. S models get 19-inch alloy wheels, leather on the steering wheel and a centre console with an armrest. SE gets 20s, upgraded LED lights, blind spot assist and on the 110, Isofix on the front passenger seat. Then there's HSE, which gets things like a sliding panoramic glass roof, matrix LED headlights and cooled front seats. While the Defender X gets a black contrast roof, terrain response 2 and a head-up display. But that's really not all. There are four accessory packs which I will guarantee you'll want to buy. The Adventure includes a side-mounted pannier box, an integrated air compressor, mud flaps, a portable rinse system with a pressurised water reservoir and a backpack built into the rear seat. Country is the posh one for shooting and adds wheel arch protection and a full height load space partition, while the Explorer pack brings things like a raised air intake, a 26kg roof rack and the same gear carrier as the Adventure. Urban is the last one and the fashionable one apparently, with lots of bright silver trim and lots of alloy wheel choices. And if that's really not enough, there are around 170 accessories on offer, with things like roof-mounted tents and lots of exterior options too, including this Defender 90s satin paint wrap to protect the paintwork, which can be removed, and this car's checker plates in various places around the bodywork. Now the joy of editing, I've been able to hop from the front seats of the 90 into the back seats of the 110 and this is the real family car of the range and you can tell that because the amount of space back here, I mean I've got tons of knee room, tons of headroom and another feeling you get back here is of light and spaciousness because you've got this glass roof here, you've got the alpine lights of course which just bathe the rear quarters in extra light and that you can have different sort of seating combinations in here as well so you can have a standard five seater you can have a six seater with that jump seat if you opt for it or you can have a five plus two and we've got the five plus two here now you to get into the back you just fold this seat down slide that forwards and there you can see you've got your two individual seats back there now they're not electric um, and it's not a full seven seater but they're for, they're for occasional use you just pop that seat up there like that with the headrest and like I say it's absolutely perfect for children back there and you've got heated seats and again you've got loads of light and this car is all about sort of durability and sort of strength and uh, extra versatility as well I mean it's a really sort of practical and um, perfect layout isn't it under that bluff nose will be a pair of petrols and two diesels on offer at launch. The P300 uses a 2.0-litre four-cylinder petrol engine with 296 bhp, while the P400 uses one of JLR's brand new 3.0-litre supercharged and turbocharged straight-six petrols. This has 395 bhp and is also a mild hybrid with a belt integrated starter motor and a 48-volt lithium-ion battery system. If you really want a diesel, and come on, it's a Defender, so the answer will probably be yes, there are two 2.0-litre two diesels. The D200 has 197 bhp and the D240 has 237 bhp. All engines get an 8-speed automatic gearbox with a twin-speed transfer case that offers low-range ratios. 90s get coil springs as standard with air suspension as an option, while the 110 gets air as standard. 
and there's also a plug-in hybrid Defender on the way, which will arrive sometime in 2020. Now, here's the bit you really want to know. What's it like off-road? Well, Land Rover claims the new Defender is even more capable off-road than its predecessors, which is quite a statement. There's a new configurable Terrain Response 2 system so you can fine-tune the car, a new Wade program which pumps up the air suspension and closes the car's air vents. The 110 has approach, breakover and departure angles of 38, 28 and 40 degrees respectively, and its maximum wading depth is 900 millimetres. That's 400 millimetres more than the old Defender. For prices, well, they start a bit lower than you were probably expecting. A basic Defender 110 with a D200 diesel engine will cost £45,240, but they shoot up to a pretty alarming £78,800 for the P400X110. The 90 hasn't been priced up just yet, but that should cost them around £40,000 and the commercial Defenders will be around £35,000 plus VAT. They arrive next year. So there we are then, the all new Defender reimagined for the 21st century. What do you think to it? Well, let us know what you think in the comments section below. And as ever, thanks for watching.